and they traded everything immediately. Another bishop f4 qgd. So in this tournament, they've been playing c5, b6, and knight b7, and all the games are drawn. I don't think bishop d3 makes any sense. I think you either have to take on d5 or play rook c1. Bishop d3, now you take on c4, and white's lost the tempo. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is a way to play for an advantage. Yeah. Not very exciting. Alejandro and Christian were trying to make this seem exciting. Alejandro was like, G4, I don't understand that move. I don't like that move. I don't know. The game is just sort of boring. So they just trade everything, every move. So. So Anish wants to repeat and draw the game. Fabi plays for the win. White's pawns are sort of weak here. But okay, there's nothing on the board. So. so that wasn't a very interesting game. Anish started by trading, 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 trading. And the reason that happened was he played a very innocuous uh, bishop d3 in this position. I mean, the queen's gambit, you want to take this and trade pieces and open the diagonal and play c5, and bishop d3 just loses a tempo. So you could play rook c1 or a3 or move your queen or take on d5. Bishop d3 would just trade all the pieces off. I mean, this isn't the way to try to win. Now, you can beat somebody weaker than you and win with no risk. Like, let's say Anish is playing me, and I'm black. I have a 0% chance of winning, and I would lose a lot because he would outplay me. So he's not risking anything. He's like, oh, I'll beat Ben half the time or more, and I'll draw a little bit, and I'll score 80% or whatever. And I'll never, ever, ever lose. Play a 1,000 games, never loses. But not against Fabiano Car No, that's, that's not how you win. This is why a lot of the games are draws. Some of the players play for the slightest of advantages, hoping to win 10 games and draw 90 out of 100, but never lose. And, I mean, it's not going to be Fabian in this position.